Welcome to Chris BI. Today, we're going to be taking on the question, what should I be using to transform my data, to enrich it, to, to, to do stuff with it? Should I use Python, SQL, Power Query? What should I do here? There's lots of, those are our three primary options, right? Which one is best for you? Now, this question came up on Saturday Morning Live. Shout out to all my SML folks out there. This was a great topic. Had to chime in on this. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Wait a minute. This is where we normally like go to my desktop. There's nothing to show on this one. This is just me talking to you about should you be using SQL, Python, or Power Query? Now, there's a lot of people that come from the mindset of, hey, I'm going to be going in on a low code front and I want to do something with my data and I am not a data engineer. So I don't really want to learn how to code. I don't want to do any of that stuff. And that is awesome. That's where Power Query comes along, allows you to simply drag and drop a lot of these, a lot of things and do this wonderful transformations on your data to do click you know, cleaning activities to add business logic in. And you completely and totally do that. And you can, uh, I mean, honestly, you can have a great career in that space doing that work, right? And if, if that's sufficient for you, great. That's f fantastic. Do that. But at some point in time, you're going to start to run into some challenges where this is not going to be an ideal so solution for you, where you're going to want to do something that goes beyond the bounds of what Power Query is good at. And I know you're saying to yourself, well, Chris, what is in Power BI or Power Query good at? That's a great question. Number one, there's a number of issues when it comes to scalability on Power Query, like how big of a data set that you can do. Uh, number two, there's some advanced transformations in Power Query that's really difficult. It doesn't perform, especially if you're doing multi-row comparisons or uh, set-based analytics that you apply uh, across a broader and larger data set where you're doing like uh, you know, windowed functions. Those types of things are exorbitantly difficult in Power Query to do and be performant. Additionally, like incremental loads and sophisticated incremental loads in Power Query is really, really hard to do. Uh, but that's where tools like SQL and Python come into play and are incredibly easy to do and easy to work in both SQL and Python. So if you're a business user and you're just doing little bits of work and you want and you're happy and you're not running into any problems in your Power Query world, great, that's awesome. Stay in Power Query. But the second you run into issues in Power Query and you start to say to yourself, oh, you know what? Maybe I should just do this as a DAX calculated column. Number one, never a DAX calculated column. That's always the wrong answer. Uh, if you're finding that, that it's just not working in Power Query, that's when you need to start looking at either SQL or Python to manage your loads and your builds. Now, the great thing about SQL and Python, if you're going to really invest your time and energy into a school set or a skill set, both of these are wildly trans, uh, transferable to other tools, other platforms, uh, anywhere you go, right? SQL's been around for 50 years. Python, I think, has around, been around for like 30 years or something like that. You know, you can fact check me and if I'm wrong and it's 20 or 15 or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's been around for forever, right? And they're both SQL and Python are broadly used across like every platform out there. Uh, SQL, or I'm sorry, Python's an open source solution where you can just go and you can download the libraries and they're, that's taught wildly in colleges, right? There's so much you can do in Python, that's fantastic. So there's a strong argument to learn Python to help you transform and manage your data. That's what notebooks are built off of. Uh, Python brings in all sorts of additional capabilities that you know go above and beyond uh, transforming and managing data. I think the challenge though, is if you're gonna pick one next language, if you're in Power Query and you're looking at one next language, where do you go? While there's a strong case for Python, SQL is part of the case for Python, right? So in Python, you can run and use SQL. So my guidance and recommendation for a lot of people is to start learning SQL because knowing select from where is a common database pattern that's applicable. I, I mean, 
the last time I looked, there were over a thousand databases that were on the market in various forms and flavors, all of them supporting a flavor of SQL. So learning SQL is highly transferable to any platform, any tool set, any capability that you're working on. Now, the best way, if you're, if you're talking about like how and where of, of, of Python SQL or just SQL, hey, why don't you learn SQL in a Python environment if you have that, right? Like Fabric Notebooks would totally allow you to do a ton of SQL functionality right inside of a Python notebook. So all you have to learn in Python are like, it's like a header and footer script, I think. I don't even know Python enough for that, but inside of there, once you have those those common like uh, header and footer scripts, you're just writing SQL inside of that. So you could learn those two header footers and then you could spend months or years learning how to do SQL right inside of that environment with small little bits of additional Python capabilities when and where you find that useful. All right, I hope you found that this was insightful and beneficial for you and you trying to figure out, am I doing Python? Am I doing SQL? Am I doing Power Query? Which one should I go with? What should I do next? Uh, again, shout out to, to the people on Saturday Morning Live for or Saturday Morning Learning to, uh, uh, to for bring up this topic and get us going on this one. I hope you found it useful. Make sure if you did, you hit like, subscribe, uh, you know, even turn on notifications so you don't miss any future con content and if you find this stuff like too confusing or just like you need some help with this like i do consulting like that's what my day job is like i help people out when it comes to consulting and fixing things so if you want help head over to creospi.com click on uh, get me a data god fill out a little form out there i'll get a notification i'll send you an email or one of my other data gods will send you an email and we'll get you hooked up all right for now you have a great day Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.